So how did air products come to be involved in the PV industry? Uh, good question. Uh, air products has um, 35 years of experience in the semiconductor and the LCD TFT market. Um, and it's just been a natural extension for us to go into PV. Um, we've been selling the polysilicon market for quite a while. Uh, we have a PACO offering. Um, our bulk gases fit into the silicon thin film offering. So it's just been a great natural extension for us. We have a lot of e expertise in engineering and project management also. So it's, it's, it's a natural fit. How's the market for gases and materials within the thin film PV industry evolved in recent years? Well, um, you know, it's, it's really taken off quite a bit. The size of the market has grown a lot. And, and with it, the size of the materials and the amount of the materials and the gases, which really fits our strengths really well. Um, so, you know, you get down to scalability as, as things grow. And, um, you know, air products, is, um, market positions globally um, really fit well with the sin, silicon thin film market and, and its growth. And Air Products is a leader in semiconductor and TFT LCD materials, so how's the PV market different? Primarily back to the size of the market. Um, we really expect that the um, silicon thin film volumes uh, will, will be much larger than, than the TFT LCD market. And, and with that, the capabilities of on-site plants and other things that have to match that size. Um, so, you know, for, for our capabilities and what we do today, um, that's, that's where we really fit in. And uh, can you tell us about your recently launched SunSource solutions and uh, the benefits they have? Yeah, we, we wanted to connect to the PV market and, and one of the things that SunSource does it really communicates for us the full tur turnkey offering for all of the PV technologies. So, you know, we can really offer the customer everything from, from the construction phase to the production phase to the expansion phase when they go to expand. Uh, we have a comprehensive product portfolio offering we have services, we have equipment, in addition to the materials. So it's really a good fit. We want to get that concept across to our customers that we can do everything for them. And so Air Products had a long-standing commitment to the environment, so how do you anticipate any environmental issues impacting the PV manufacturers? Well, you know, the big issue that has uh, come out recently is uh, NF3, which is a chamber clean gas, and, and the uh, greenhouse gas effect of that particular uh, gas. Um, you know, a lot of people, I mean, there's been a lot of press out there, um, most of a negative on NF3. You know, the reality is, is that NF3, with proper abatement, which is done throughout the industry today in all industries, is well below detection limits. Uh, so it, it can be managed, uh, just like many of the other gases can be. Um, fluorine's another option, which is not a greenhouse gas, which we have also and we can do. There are some safety issues and redundancy issues associated with fluorine, and you really need a little bit more scale to get to that level for it to work. But um, those are the only um, environmental, uh, environmental issues I think uh, pertain to, to what challenges we have. Um, besides the environmental stewardship, uh, what other advice would you offer customers? Well, you know, I think the important part is not to underestimate um, the supply chain aspect of the business. When, when you're talking about uh, increased flows and, and, and the scalability and the large materials that are going to be used, large amount of materials that are going to be used, you really need a robust supply chain to manage all that. It's not an easy thing to do, especially globally. And we're already set up globally, and, and we have that capability already uh, with our existing customers in, in various market segments. And how does the trend towards gigawatt scale thin film plants impact your business? You know, that's, um, as you move towards uh, gigawatt size, the customer really benefits from scalability. Um, they can really leverage the, the volumes and the size of, of the production. Uh, we have a cost roadmap that identifies a 45% uh, reduction in the cost stack for materials as you move up to the gigawatt level. Um, you can expand into on-site plants, you can expand into on-site blending equipment for the dopants. There's a lot of avenues and um, uh, advantages to the scalability aspect that we can bring to bear. From the capacity and conversion efficiency basis, uh, cadmium telluride, um, thin film technology is market leadership. So what film technology has the greatest ability to compete with that? Um, you know, yeah, we, we think that uh, silicon thin film technology has the best chance to compete with the CAD TEL technology. And the reason for that, we think there's a lot of upside on um, not only um, improvements in efficiency, uh, but improvements in the process uh, from the materials applications, new materials coming in, uh, so you can drive the cost down and improve the efficiency at the same time. Uh, we have a lot of things that we're working on that, that, that right now that we think will help uh, with that. 
Um, so I, we really think that silicon thin film technology can compete. And, I mean, in addition to that, all of the OEMs have, have a cost roadmap out there too, which really shows that you know, they're all going to be below a dollar per watt um, as far as their costs are concerned, as far as the, the, what the modules will be able to do. So um, you know, I think that matches up really well with CADTEL. And with the globalization of PV manufacturing, can Air Products offer a customer support on the global basis? Absolutely. I mean, one of, one of the major themes that we um, uh, provide our customers with is um, our global presence and being able to follow them around the globe. We've really seen that the uh, uh, PV customers really put plants in all parts of, of the world. I mean, tax incentives are a big part of it. Labor costs are a big part of it for them. Uh, they want to be closer to their markets. We have capabilities in all the major markets around the world. And so typically if a customer goes to any market, whether it be China, whether it be India, whether it be North America or Europe, um, you know, Japan, we have infrastructure. And uh, we, uh, we can provide our customers with what they need as they expand. Lower production costs was a key catalyst for thin film manufacturing growth in recent years, but the rapid decline of polysilicon prices Conventional crystalline technologies have significantly closed the gap on cost leadership of thin film. So what can you guys do to ensure the continued competitive cost differentiation of the film? Yeah, you're right. I mean, uh, with the drop in polysilicon pricing, uh, crystal and PV has, has really gotten more cost competitive. Um, you know, we service the crystal and PV market too. We have products that go into there, our bulk acids, our POCL, our equipment. Uh, but for silicon thin film, you know, there, there's some pretty good leverage points. I think it really comes down to um, offering new products and technology that will really accentuate the efficiency uh, and the cost reduction of silicon thin film in order to compete. Uh, we just we recently won a United States Department of Energy grant to work on uh, additives for the silicon thin film industry. Uh, we have other projects on anti-reflective coatings going on. So we're investing R&D dollars to really help the proliferation of uh, silicon thin film PV. And we're looking at things to help the other markets too. The other, they're, they're all important. We, we think alternate energy is something that the, the world needs and we want to be a part of that. And what growth do you expect to see for thin film as the market recovers next year? And uh, should we be concerned with any possible material shortages such as silane and industry ramps capacity? Yeah, that, that's a good question, because when you think about the proliferation of, of, the, of the industry, and, and with it all, the uh, growth in the materials capacity can become an issue. Last year, we had a uh, issue with silane, as an example. It was very tight in supply. Um, Air Products is the uh, leading uh, uh, merchant seller of silane in, in the world, as well as NF3. Those are two of the biggest chamber cleaning gas, well, NF3 is a chamber cleaning gas, but it's the largest gases that are used in a silicon thin film technology, and we have a leading position globally on both of them. So we, we really don't foresee any issues. I think the, the industry has responded to the capacity concerns, and, and I know we have. And uh, so I, I think that from a capacity perspective, um, you know, we should be okay for the next five to seven years based upon the forecasting that we've done.